Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we are going to be doing the basic, basic notes for graphing rational expressions, which look something like this. Um, so there's a lot of properties that I'm going to go over, and then in a different video I'm going to go over how to actually graph them. But this is the how to understand what each thing is. So there are vertical asymptotes, three variations of horizontal asymptotes, and then there's even holes or points of discontinuity. Okay, so I'm going to go through each one of these, do a basic graph, and then on a different video, we're going to go through all the different graphs that, and actually like focus on the graphing. So a vertical asymptote, let's say we had the 2 over x plus 3 as my example, you would set the bottom of the fraction equal to 0, and you would get your vertical asymptote. So if we set x plus 3 equal to 0, we would find out that x cannot equal negative 3, and that would be our vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3, because if you set x plus 3 equal to 0, you would get negative 3. Okay, so that is the vertical asymptote, which is why when I showed my original graph right here, there is a vertical kind of line going down that right there. Okay, so vertical asymptotes are the easiest. You can normally look at it and be like, that's the vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes, you will have to memorize this part. Hopefully, you'll have scenario one or scenario two. And all of these smaller over bigger is in relationship to the exponents. For example, in our first example, where we had 2 over x plus 3, the horizontal asymptote would be 0 because you have a smaller exponent. You have x to the 0. You don't even have an x on the top of the fraction. You have an x to the first on the bottom of the fraction, so a smaller exponent over a bigger exponent will always produce a horizontal asymptote of zero, which is why you can see this horizontal line at zero here where it does not cross the graph. Another example of this would be if we had something like x plus 3 over x squared minus 5. You have a smaller exponent, x to the first on the top of the fraction, and a bigger exponent, x squared on the bottom of the fraction, this would also have a horizontal asymptote of zero, okay? Even if it's something that looks like this, where it's 5x over 2x squared, x to the first compared to x squared, horizontal asymptote of zero, all right? There's another scenario where you could have the same exponent over the same exponent, and if that happens, so for instance, if you had 2x plus 5 over 3x minus 4, x to the first and x to the first, your horizontal asymptote in this case would be 2 thirds, which is kind of funky, but that would be what it is. If we had an example where it was x plus 5, let's do 2x plus 5 over x minus 3. The horizontal asymptote in this case would be 2 over 1 because it's x to the first over x to the first. If it were 2x squared and x squared minus 3, it would still be 2 over 1. It doesn't matter if they're squared or whatever. As long as it's the same exponent and the same exponent, you get your horizontal asymptote from those leading coefficients, okay? Last one, this one is more obscure. If you have a bigger over a smaller exponent, for instance, if we had x squared over x plus 1, that will produce something unique. It will produce a slanted asymptote or a hole, and I'm going to go over holes in a second. So if I had x squared divided by x plus 1. See how this horizontal asymptote is no longer horizontal? It's actually slanted, or you could also call it oblique. That is what it's doing there. We have another video where I'm going to go over how to get the slanted asymptote, but the point here is that this would be a slanted asymptote. You would get it by dividing. Okay, you can get it by dividing using synthetic division or polynomial long division. That's how you get them. All right? We got one more scenario, and that is a whole. So for instance, if we had x plus 1 
x plus 5 and x plus 5 here. Here, we would, would have had a vertical asymptote at negative 5. However, um, you may notice that the x plus 5s cancel out. And if we cancel that out, now instead of having a vertical asymptote, we have a hole at negative 5. And if I were to graph this, it would essentially be graphing this line, x plus 1, which looks like a line, but at negative 5, we should have a hole in the graph. Now, if you graph these in your normal graphing calculator, holes really don't show up. You have to know what is going on to determine the hole. And you would get it normally by factoring and crossing it off. So the holes can either happen on a line, but they could have also happened on a scenario where you had a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. There could be other scenarios where the hole exists on regular, normal-looking, rational graphs, okay? So, point here is, holes occur when a vertical asymptote cancels out, it upgrades to a hole, it is no longer a vertical asymptote, this is a completely different problem, this would be something where we still had, like, x plus 2 and x minus 3 left over, but then something canceled out because, you know, you just notice my hole is at, like, positive 4, or something like that, which means that we would have originally had some x minus 4s cancel out, all right? So that was the basic, basic notes. It doesn't go over all the graphing things. I'm going to continue doing these and show at least another two videos on how to deal with the normal problems, probably another one on how to deal with the slanted asymptotes, and then even a third one because you could still shift these up or down and cause all sorts of ruckus, okay? So stay tuned. Stay positive, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.